Good morning. It is Friday the 4th of September. No. 4th of September. <sighs> um, uh, it is, I don't even know what time it is. Quarter to 10? Yeah, quarter to 10. So school run has been done and um, I have just signed on to a work meeting. So uh, the tutoring company that I work with and we have a morning catch up or rather they have a morning catch up every, um, every day and I try and log on at least once a week. Um, I am going to sit down and do the edit from yesterday now. Um, so hopefully that'll be up by at least lunchtime. And then I have a lot to do in terms of catching up on admin. So uh, I've got to go through all my, my list of students and work out who I should be chasing and who I need to work around. Um, I need to do some life admin and kind of just go through my inbox of stuff that I've been putting off. Um, laundry. I'm going to try and do some spinning while I edit. So I'm going to film myself editing and then film myself spinning. Um, we had, I had to get the vintage button box out today. Uh, this is a box that belonged to my mother-in-law um, because we realised that one of the second hand pieces of uniform that we got for the small person um, was missing a button. Um, so uh, I had to get out the emergency sewing kit. It's not emergency, I have a sewing kit, it's fine. Um, and uh, quickly so well move a button up because it was the middle button and I didn't want to put a different button on the middle button so I took the one from the bottom moved that up and then put a odd button at the bottom so I need to now find a set of I can leave it like that I suppose but part of me really wants to just get a new set of like six buttons for and replace them um so yes um So yeah, admin -y day. Um, I still need to finish here. At least everything's up on the walls. I'm loving this. This makes me very happy. That, the sheep, makes me very happy too. Um, I'm now looking at, there's like a, a blank bit of wall above the bed now that, that's behind the curtains that I'm like, oh, I could put something there. I don't need to put something there. Um, there's enough stuff in this room. Um, so yeah, I still need to sort out bringing stuff back in. Um, but I think I've managed to kind of extricate a bit more room underneath the bed somehow. Um, so, and I've cleared out the right two cubbies in my, um, cow axe. So I can put some stuff in there as well. That's all fat. That was all fabric. Um, which uh, is now sitting on the bed. Um, I, but I need to... I need to do something with it, but it's it's like big bits of fabric. Um, so I do have a fabric kind of bag underneath the bed, um, which is pretty full. Um, I should really do a de stash of my fabric, really, shouldn't I? A lot of it's grannies, though, and I don't really want to get rid of it. But yes, so that is the plan. I have a meeting at two um, to talk through our Oxbridge programmes and then school run and all the usual the usual stuff so yeah ad mini day bit of a boring it's probably going to be a bit of a day-to-day -day vlog again um what i might do oh i might do a well, maybe i'll do that tomorrow no it's fine scratch that reverse it i am going to be doing some um a new spin um today so obviously i plied the Shetland I think this is Shetland and it's got like it's literally got no bounce left to it which shows that actually it's a relatively balanced look it's a relatively balanced yarn which I'm really happy with um so yes that has that needs to sit for a, I'm gonna sit let that sit um until this evening and then I'll wind it off and give it its bath tonight um so for now I am using and I've, I've prepped it all last night this is um Poledale, Corridale, Superwash Polworth um, with nylon, 50%. So it's 85% Polworth and 15% nylon from um, the lovely Alma, who is a witchcrafty lady. She gifted me this braid when I ordered three other braids from her. But it's this, oh, it's like, it's like a cloud. But it's really quite a long staple, which 
makes me happy. Um, so yes, I have made it into little nets, split it into three, so that actually I can get a relatively, hopefully I'll get three bobbins that are about the same, hopefully. That's the premise anyway. If you've got the same grams, then you should get the same length. We'll see. Um, so yes. Um, so yesterday's was, it's an S twist yarn, which is a normal twist. Um, so you ply, no, you spin the single Z and then you twist, you ply them S to reverse the twist. Um, I sound like I know what I'm talking about, don't I? I don't know whether I want to do a Z twist because Z twist yarn is really good for crocheters because of the way we, we hook, but I'm a lefty. So actually S twist is better for me. But maybe Z twist is better for the way I knit. I don't know. I, s I do find that my yarn un like untwists when I'm casting on. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I kind of want to do another S twist yarn. So I'll apply it Z. Anyway, so yes, edit, spin while I do the final run through of the edit. Life admin. Laundry. That's basically the three things today. I've just been going through the comments um, from yesterday of the day three is up um, and Tara who has been with me hi Tara um, who has been with me since the planner days on this on this uh, channel so she's one of my longest suffering viewers um, asked about my fountain pen collection so I'm gonna do it seeing as this is quite a slow vlog day um, so we'll start with kind of the current rotation um most of my inks are actually in the garage at the moment um so i can't show you the inks but i'll show the, those to you another time um but i do have a nice little collection of kind of little mini bottles of inks that means i can switch through because i'm fickle um but yeah so most of my fountain pens live in oh, let's see if i can show you there's like a little plastic there um draw unit from muji which is my computer stand basically um but in one of those drawers lives my fountain pens in here um and these are pretty much all cleaned and empty at the moment so um i have four yes four that are in um normal rotation um so first one which is the one that's attached to my planner this is the one that i've shown you um as part of my bullet journal description on day one this is the twisby go it's brand new it's spring loaded and it's currently got some very mixed up um ink in it oh, what's the ink in this one it's the japanese one wait a minute i'll go and find the bottle this it's a uh, pilot yarn uh, pilot yarn pilot ink which is pilot is it pilot irushizuku yarn and it's in the color tsukiyo There you go. It's a gorgeous blue, um, kind of like a, t a dark teal. Um, I really like it. I was given this bottle by my father-in-law, I think, a while ago. I just love the little point on the uh, bottom of the bottle. So yes, that's in the Twisby Eco. It's also in my other, no, Twisby Go. It's also in my Twisby Eco, which is um, kind of the big brother to the Twisby Go. It's a piston filled pen i i absolutely love clear pens because i love seeing the inner workings um this is a very interesting pen to clean <laughs> um you have to have the special tool that comes with the pen and if you lose that tool you're a little bit screwed so this is one of the only pens that i've kept the box for because it keeps all the gubbins together and i'm not going to get into this box now am i there we go um but yes it comes with a little tool and some grease as well to grease the piston so it's a very involved pen um but i love it it's uh, got a medium nib both of those have got medium nibs um they are i think twisby's a german brand am i right in saying that or is it a 
Oh, oh no, it's made in China. That doesn't really mean anything, does it? I don't actually know. Is Twisby... It's either German or Japanese, one of the two. Oh uh, no, that's Mandarin. Put it here, where, what Twisby is. Anyway, so the Go and the Eco have both got the same pilot, Ira Shizuku. Um, this is my favourite pen. I love it. Um, but because it's a twist cap, whereas this is a click cap, this is better for on the go. This just lives um, in a little Clairefontaine leather, leather, no, I think it's pleather, um, pencil case on my desk. Um, the other um, fountain pens that are currently in rotation is, this is a Lamy All Star. Um, Lamy is definitely a German brand. Um, I love it. It has got currently, I think it's this one, um, J. Herbin, which is a French. Um, it's got Terre de Feu, J. Herbin, um, which is like a lovely kind of reddy brown. Um, that's, so that's a Lamy All Star. That is a medium nib as well, I think, or is that a fine nib? Fine nib, German fine nib. Um, so it's still, German nibs tend to run thicker than Japanese nibs. Um, so it's about the same line as a um, as my Twisby, even though it's a fine nib. I love the Lamy um, pens because you can interchange the um, nibs really easily. Um, so I've got, I think actually quite a lot of my Lamy's came with medium nibs because that's their kind of default. And then you can buy the fine or the extra fine or the broad or the like all sorts. Um, it's really, it's a really nice brand in terms of versatility. Um, so I've got quite a lot of Lamy's, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, the other one that's kind of in, in rotation is attached to my yarn notes book, which goes with all of my, if I'm testing, this is where my notes go. Um, and this is the Kaweco Sport pen, which is a tiny little one. And really it's only usable when you put the, the lid on it. Um, this is, I think German as well. Um, and this is a, extra fine nib um so it is very thin um i feel actually it's quite scratchy so like yeah that's kind of my notes for the last unicorn it is i would say it's almost biro like ballpoint pen thin whereas if i show you my writing in my bullet journal um that's quite thick i write big um so yes, it's not my favourite pen to use because of the extra fine nib, but it is a nice little pen. And in there is currently a, I think it's just a black standard cartridge. Yeah, I think it's just a black standard cartridge. Um, okay, and then if we go in to the pens that are currently not in use, I have two dip pens. Uh, one was from a handmade fair kind of calligraphy thing and then this I actually have no idea where I got this from but they're dip pens literally you dip and write um, then I have my lammies all of them wait a minute there's three I had to, I had to throw one out um, yeah it got a bit mouldy so these are all wait a minute that's an all star because it's a metal and then these are safaris which have got the plastic body I love the charcoal grey one um, oh no and this one the two, these two, so I've got three All Stars. I think they're called All Stars. Um, in the orange, the green, and the burgundy, um, which is currently in use. And then you've got the two Safaris. Um, these all have fine nibs on them, I think. Yeah. But they're lovely. Um, you can either use them with the proprietary. Um, these ones, they have, they are proprietary cartridges, so you have to buy them from Lamy, um, or you can buy the converter, cartridge converter, which I think I've got in this one, um, no, which is like a twist piston. Um, but I love them. They're really well made. As I said, they're really interchangeable. So if I show you, literally, you can just, oh, here we go. I'm not going to do it now. I've got too many things in my hands, that's why. So literally pinch and pull comes off like that and you can just interchange and they're really really easy you do have to be careful with them so you see their nibs and they're metal and they're malleable but so those are my lammies um let's put them on here so that and I've also got a little box of my spare 
nibs for lammies. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. So the other ones I've got are, I've got a Pilot, oh, these are absolutely everywhere. They're like the cheap kind of entry level Pilot fountain pen. Um, they're metal. This one is the, um, it's got a zebra stripe on it. Um, this is really nice. It is a fine nib, medium nib. Medium nib, so it's relatively fine for European standards. Um, I really like using that, but it's just not in rotation at the moment. It's quite heavy. And then these two are the, oh, I've forgotten the name of these. Platinum, these are Japanese as well. These are another cheap, um, cheaper entry-level fountain pen. Um, they are fun because they've got um, matching colored nibs. So you've got a blue nib for the blue pen and then a green nib for the green pen. It's really good. Um, so these are Platinum Preppies, I think they're called. Or is Preppy the... No, Plaisir. Preppy's the plastic um, body one. This is the Platinum, um, the, yeah, Platinum Plaisir. Um, these, I think, have... Yes, they have proprietary, I think. Or are they... No, they have proprietary cartridges, if I remember correctly. Whereas the uh, pilot doesn't, maybe I'm telling a lie there. Um, if you if you were in brought up in the UK, um, quite a lot of us are used to kind of the Parker pen um, standard cartridges, which is the same. It's a standard cartridge, um, so ones that I don't even have them. Lamy looks like this one. That's a Lamy one. And then Pilot Namiki, which is their high end, uh, have ones that look like that. Um, so yes, that is basically the fountain pen collection. I'm, I'm a little bit of a geek about it. I used to be more geeky um, when I was far more into the, I also have this, which I don't particularly like, but it's a J. Elba um, inked, ballpoint pen. It's very interesting. Um, so yes, that is my fountain pen collection so far. It's not massive, it's not extensive. I do have one which is broken, or rather the nib is broken, which is my most expensive one, which is the Pilot Vanishing Point because it's a clicky fountain pen. I think the small person got to this when she was smaller and the nib has bent and it doesn't write very well. It's also, to be honest, I've had all sorts of issues with this pen for, for like a over hundred pound pen. Um, I've had all sorts of issues with it leaking and generally not behaving itself. So I didn't reach for it when it worked. It's just so easy though with the click. So part of me is thinking, there is a fountain pen shop in Oxford. I might see if they can service it. I don't know, like, Anyone in the UK, do you know of people who service fountain pens? I'm sure there's, I'm sure there is some, like there are, there are people that do it, but I kind of want to take, send this away for it to be looked at and serviced so that it actually works and it's worth the money that, it wasn't me, it was given to me as a present by my father-in-law. Um, he likes to uh, enable me in my stationary obsession. Um, yeah. If anyone in the UK knows of people that service pens, let me know, comment below, that would be good. If anyone, I know Tara's in the US, but anyone who's still watching me from the kind of pen planner area, tap, tap, tap. Um, so yes, that's my pen collection. Something that I've just found in this drawer is this key ring. Um, so I used to be a bit of an amdram at school and uh, this is a key ring from a uh, production of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. If you haven't seen it, it's a film that's very much made for the carry-on generation. So carry-on films are very slapstick, a bit naughty, yeah. Um, and uh, we put on a version of it um, at our local theatre. We actually got to have our theatre. I had a dressing room and everything so much fun um and i played a <laughs> yeah i'll see if there's like a youtube clip clip to, to something um i played a girl who lives in a brothel basically but i'm purposefully kept a virgin this is my character i'm purposely kept a virgin so that the madam 
can sell me off to, for the highest price, basically. Um, and I play basically a very ditzy little girl. Um, and it's just funny. Anyway, there's a picture of me, 18 year old me, in a toga on stage with, and I can't remember, the guy in the middle is Jeremy. Can't remember the other guy's name. It's really bad. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, there was definitely, in our school, there was definitely some amdrams. Um, and this was, this was a school where it was, it was an all boys school and there were girls in the sixth form, me included, um, but we were about 10% of the population. Um, so putting on a production where you had to have prostitutes, female prostitutes on literally every girl that was in the sixth form. Was, and they were very small parts, like they didn't really have any speaking parts. There was only two girls, two girls, three girls who had speaking roles, me, my friend Pam, and someone else. Can't remember who the other person was. Anyway, um, but yeah, all the other girls were literally like told to, uh, asked nicely to play prostitutes. Um, <laughs> it was really, it's a really non-PC film and story, but it was a lot of fun to do as an 18 year old. Um, yeah, and like the guys who were a bit techie got to do all the sound like in a proper like proper soundboard. Um, we had yeah, it was a it was a really lovely production to be part of. And then the year before, I was in an Agatha Christie production, which we did at school, not in the theatre. Called was it Black Coffee? Was it Agatha Christie? Anyway, that was fun. Um, yeah, sometimes I do miss the Amdram stuff, but this allows me to have an, an outlet for the dramatic. <laughs> right, anyway, on... Apparently I'm about to run out of battery. My fairy lights are up. So, that one, let's use the... don't know what that is. And another one! Yay. Yeah. Good evening. It's been a while since I turned on my camera. <laughs> Ah, so I, we did pick up, we're in the middle of bedtime, I swapped with Chris because the small person was mucking about, um, so I'm cooking, we are having fajitas.